Sarah. Sasa Sana Warden. And 20, everyone, which means let's go. So, welcome, friends, out to Harambe Wildlife Reserve. My name is Stephanie. Hope you're having a great day so far. The first part we're actually going to head into is called Little Tree Forest. And a lot of the animals in the forest are really shy. Some of them will even use their surroundings as a camouflage. So, I recommend looking by any trees or any shrubs. That's usually where you might be able to find them hiding around. If you look over on your right hand side there, that's an okapi. It does have a slight zebra pattern, but it is the only known relative of the giraffe. They're also really good listeners, so they can rotate their ears almost to 360 degrees. You can usually tell the male and females apart because the males have ossicles on the top of their head. You can think of them kind of like a bone structure, but instead of sitting outside of the skin like horns, well, they're actually underneath. On your top right hand side, the gray animal walking around there is actually a female breeder kudu. You can tell she's a female because she doesn't have any horns. They can actually reach around five feet tall just from their shoulder and leap up to eight feet into the air. On your left hand side, you'll be able to spot a black rhino. They can reach up to 3,000 pounds, but there's only about 5,000 of them left in the entire world. It is because of poaching. Poachers believe their horns have medical benefits when they don't. They're just made up of keratin, so it's kind of like hunting them for a thick fingernail. It's pretty pointless. If you take a look on your top right hand side by the yellow shrubs, those red animals are called bongos. They get poached for a slight purple this red tint that they have on their fur. Those guys are actually really good at hiding. That's why they're known as the ghost of the forest. They're also really large. They can actually weigh up to about 900 pounds. We're going to head into Safi River now, so look carefully in the water for any of those lumps or shadows. Because some of the animals will either um, on the bottom of the riverbed or they'll even float around throughout the water as well. On your right hand side, you'll be able to spot a Nile hippo. They can reach up to 5,500 pounds, even though they only eat about 90 pounds of food a day, which is mostly veggies. They can actually stay underwater for eight minutes at a time, and that's because their nostrils close completely so no water gets inside of them. They make a sound called wheeze honking, and you can always tell who's most dominant because they'll get the most reaction out of their entire group, which is called a blow. On your left hand side on the bird's nest are some pink back pelicans. Right now they're not pink because they only get their pink color during mating season. And during mating season, both male and female will incubate the eggs for about 30 days. The gullar pouch they have on the bottom of their beaks is what they use like nets to catch their fish. It'll drain the water out and then they can swallow their fish whole. You'll see lots of birds wherever there's hippos, whether it's the pelicans, maybe some vultures, or even some ducks. And that's because they actually help keep them clean. They pick off any of the algae that they may have on their backs. You're definitely going to want to stay seated around here because there are some Nile crocodile. They can reach up to 16 feet long and weigh as much as 500 pounds. They're also, just like most reptiles, don't have to eat every single day. 
for every single week, but in a single feed, they can eat up to 250 pounds of food. If you ever see them with their mouths open, that's a cooling mechanism that they do, just like when a dog takes their tongue down. Sometimes inside of their mouths, you might even be able to find a baby crocodile or some crocodile eggs, and that's just because they hold their babies in their mouth for protection whenever they need to move around. We're going to go to the savannah now. If you look on your right-hand side, you'll spot the baobab tree. It's also known as an upside-down tree just because it looks like its roots are up in the air. Those trees can actually live anywhere from 200 to 500 years, but nowadays they're dying prematurely. And unfortunately, the number two reason why animals become endangered is because of environment loss. When we cut down all the trees, not only do we take away their source of water, we take away their source of food and their homes as well. So when you guys recycle, it actually makes a big difference for them. Any of the hoofstock animals you might find are actually born at night. That's when a lot of the animals will generally get their most active. On your right hand side, there is a Masai giraffe. Their babies can actually be born at around six feet tall and at a six foot drop. And once they're fully grown, they can reach anywhere from 18 to 20 feet tall. The hair that's on the ends of their tails are actually 10 times thicker than the hair we all have on our heads. And it can reach up to three feet long. On your left hand side, you can spot some African wild dogs running around there. They're one of the world's most successful mammals for hunting because they hunt in a pack. They can actually chase their prey for three and a half miles at 35 miles per hour, and they won't stop until their prey gets tired. They also don't bark or howl. In order to communicate, they make a high-pitched chirping sound. A lot of people think that they're related to hyenas, but they're not. Hyenas are actually their own species. On your left hand side, the red animals there are called sable antelopes. If a predator were come to attack them from behind or jump on their backs, they could defend themselves really easily because of the curve that they have on their horns. What is that? And on your left, you can find a couple of them aside giraffes. A group of giraffes is actually called a tower. If you do see a super light colored baby, that's actually the newest baby. She's only about four or five months old. They can eat about 70 to 75 pounds of food a day. And to help with that, their tongues are actually purple, just so they don't get sunburned. They're also prehensile, which just means they're long and have a grip to them, like our fingertips do, to help them grab onto any of the leaves. This is another couple of the giraffes way over there on your right-hand side. If you guys look over onto the left-hand side, that cattle there is called an Ancoli cattle. Their horns can reach an average of four feet tall, but they can definitely get much taller. And inside of them is actually a honeycomb structure that helps them cool down whenever they get really hot. Those cattle are also a symbolization of wealth for the Maasai tribe. So the larger the herd, the richer you are. But of course, you can't keep them in banks, so they keep them inside of thorny bush pins known as miniata or boma that they make for them. on your left hand side and we'll pass some more of them on your right hand side as well so that way you guys can see the different types of horns that they have the horns are actually super sharp even if you were to just poke them they can actually pierce right through your finger the larger beige animals you see on your right are some female Patterson elands, and the bigger guy who's a little bit gray is actually the male. That's usually how you can tell them apart is from their size and coloring. The other gray animals on the top of the hill are white-bearded wildebeest and the little beige guys with the white bellies are called springbok. 
The will of the beast lay down in rows as a defensive mechanism, and when there's larger predators around, they'll actually stand up, make a big defensive circle, and fight together whenever they need to. Those little springbok can only reach around three feet tall from their shoulder, and they're known for doing this thing called pronking, where they leap six feet in the air whenever they get startled. But to get away from predators, they don't have to pronk because they're also really fast. They can reach up to 60 miles per hour. <laughs> The Patterson Elan, sometimes you might find the males with a little bitty flower crown on their heads, and that's because they'll actually ruffle through the bushes and keep whatever they can on the tops of their heads to show off for the ladies. Over on your right hand side, just spot some African elephants. Sometimes if you see them completely alone, that's how you can tell they're males. Because once the males reach around 13 to 15 years old, the females will actually kick them out. And the females will all stay together. They actually use their trunks to pick up the food, to drink water, or to even take baths. So sometimes you might see them use it to pick up sand or dirt and throw it all over themselves. And that's because they have really sensitive skin, so they use those things like their sunscreen. I'll go really slow. You will have to look back on the right-hand side a little bit to see one of them. They can eat about 300 pounds of food a day which is also the size their babies can be born at. And once the females are fully grown, they can reach around 10,000 pounds, and the males can grow up to be more than 14,000 pounds. And at one point, not only were they actually endangered because of the poachers hunting them for the ivory in their tusks, they also got hunted by farmers, and it was only because whenever they would migrate around, they would destroy the farmers' crops. But a couple of the farmers decided they wanted to help save and protect the elephants instead. So they studied them and figured out that they were terrified of the sounds of bees. They built small fences around their crops with some beehives attached to them, and it actually worked. The elephants would either migrate along the fence area or in the opposite direction, and it also helped make the farmers some extra cash for the honey as well. Disney's animators actually took the same trip that you're all taking right now about 25 years ago throughout East Africa. They studied all the details that they saw in the savanna, including the way the animals were migrating, when they would hunt, and when they would feed. And that's actually how they got the inspiration behind the first Lion King movie. Up ahead, I do see the baby African elephant. She's hanging out with one of her siblings. So I'll go really slow. You guys will have to look on the left side, but in the right corner, and you'll see them. They're actually spraying the mud on themselves. I'll go super slow. She's kind of hiding in the right corner on the left side. If you keep looking on your left, you'll spot some greater flamingos. <laughs> You can tell they're greater flamingos because they're the tallest and the lightest shade of pink of all flamingos. They actually get their pink color from their diet. They mostly eat shrimp, and shrimp just has a special keratin in it that'll help give them that pink color. You might hear them making some noises. Usually when one does it, it's to let their group know where they are. If you hear a few of them doing it and you see their feathers sticking straight up, that means they're actually getting ready to fight with one another. And if you hear the whole group doing it and you see them flapping their wings around or looking from left to right kind of frantically, that means they all feel threatened. There might be someone hanging around they're not used to being around, or there might be bad weather coming in as well. On the left there, it looks like there might have been some rhinos hanging around because of that big mud hole. They actually roll around in the mud whenever they want to cool down, or even when they have fleas and ticks, because it actually helps get rid of those things. 
Parrotas also have really sensitive hearing because they actually only have about 10 feet of vision. That's as far as they can see. Everything else is a big blur. So they mostly rely on hearing. As we wrap around here, if you look on the left side, the brownish grayish animals you see are female water bucks. You can tell they're females because the males actually have ginormous horns. They always look wet and that's because they actually have a really thick oil structure to their fur that helps them become water resistant. The oil structure helps them a lot because the larger predators don't actually like the way that it smells or the way that it tastes so they won't actually hunt them.